weekly what's up i'm tori nagel and i'm olivia bracia and this is your weird national news here's one monster of a story for you yesterday a scuba diver discovered an 18 foot long oarfish in southern california jasmine santana was snorkeling in tonia bay when she spotted a half dollar sized eyeball staring up at her the eyeball once belonged to legendary oarfish which is the longest bony fish species these monsters are rarely found, dead or alive. It took nearly 15 people to drag this dead fish ashore, and many people have been calling it the discovery of a lifetime. What did she say it was? An, an oarfish? An oarfish, yeah. It's a really strange that. name. On Saturday, October 12th, Minneapolis's ninth annual zombie pub crawl witnessed a man eat more brains than anyone else. The man, Joey Jaws Chestnut, put away 54 pork brain tacos in approximately eight minutes. According to Huffington Post, this record succeeded another man named Matt Megatoad Stoney, who reportedly ate 53.5 tacos. Although the idea of eating brains is off-putting, Chestnut admitted that they did not taste that bad. Chestnut now holds the bragging rights to eating more brains than anyone else, and he received a $1,000 prize for his accomplishment. Ew. <laughs> That's all I had to say for that. Ew. Well... This next story sure does sound like a pain in the butt. A man in Orlando has been arrested for giving illegal butt injections. Matthew Schultz was arrested at a local hotel where police officers found drugs and 47 bottles of lindicane. For those of you who don't know, lindicane is a drug that's used for dental anesthetics, and it is known for relieving itching and burning pains. Schultz was charged with unlicensed medical practice for performing an average of six inje injections per day, and usually those injections costed between $100 and $1,200. I guess so, but that's like a really, I don't know, I don't want to touch your butt. <laughs> In other news, a Chinese farmer recently amputated his own leg. On October 14th, Huffington Post reported that the man had been suffering from blood clot complications when he took matters into his own hands. The man, Jing Yingling, said he first experienced the pain in his leg two years ago. Seeing as he did not have enough money to pay for the medical treatment, he resorted to this drastic measure. To complete the amputation, the farmer used a hacksaw and a fruit knife to slice his leg open. Amazingly, this act saved the farmer's life, and even more shockingly, the farmer will need the other leg amputated soon. Fortunately, he has agreed to go to the doctors for this one. I mean, it's gross, but at the same time, I guess that's what they did back in the olden days. They just like, do it yourself. Cut you apart, right? <laughs> Find that on Pinterest. <laughs> well, let's go down under to Australia, where a kangaroo temporarily shut down the entire Melbourne airport. The animal was injured, but still managed to hop through a terminal and into a drugstore before wildlife workers tranquilized it. But how did this kangaroo even get into the airport? Apparently, Melbourne Airport is next to a bushland where many kangaroos like to visit. Totally sounds like stereotypical Australia, right? <laughs> yeah, it does. <laughs> In other news, the librarians of Rhode Island are making an effort to change their stereotypes by making a surprisingly themed calendar. According to NBC News, the Library Association recently manufactured a 2014 calendar called the Tattooed Librarians of the Ocean State. Just as it sounds, the calendar features 12 librarian employees with their tattoos in a library-type setting. Reportingly, the point of this unexpected theme was to attract a young crowd. The president of the Library Association, Jennifer Bond, explained that the purpose was to show how librarians are for all generations, not just old women, like previous stereotypes suggest. A copy of this calendar can be ordered from the Ro Rhode Island Library Association for the low price of $12. That's actually kind of cool. Are you going to order one? Uh, probably not, but I'm all for breaking the stereotypes of librarians. In Kansas, a man got hit by a train, then got up and walked away. Talk about taking a hit and walking it off. Christopher Wernberg was walking along the train tracks with his earbuds in, but he didn't hear the train coming. After being hit, the man got up and immediately made a phone call. He was later hospitalized with cuts on his shoulder and legs, but that's still pretty minimal considering he was hit by a train. But now he can walk away and say he got hit by a train and like, live to tail a tale, you know? It's like perfect for two truths and a lie. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> in other news, in Southern California, a cafe has opened a toilet-themed eatery. According to Huffington Post, owner Yo-Yo Lee has recently opened his business calling it the Magic Restroom Cafe. Apparently, everything about the establishment features some type of toilet-themed decor. Reportingly, the dishes, seats, and even food have some type of resemblance to toilets, bathrooms, and human waste. The idea came to Lee when he noticed the popularity of toilets in China and Taiwan. Some examples of the dishes that the cafe serves are golden poop rice, chocolate sundaes, called black poop, and various other foods named after human bodily functions. Shockingly, the theme of the eatery is getting better reviews than the actual food. Overall, Yelp rates it at three stars. Ugh, I don't like crude humor, so just hearing that was really hard for me. Well, that's all for our weird national news, but stay tuned because next we have Jake and Susanna with weird science news. Oh, 
what am I going to do? I need a break from all this work. I really want to find stuff about, like, sports around campus. What am I going to do? There's no... I, what's going Hey, man, looks like you're having some trouble there. Dude, you need to get... You need to find VTTV, man. Channel VTTV? 33. What's that? Dude, it's the place where you can find all your entertainment, sports, news, and, spe and special productions, man. Oh, sweet. Thanks, That's, that's where you got to go, man. Yeah. Oh, what am I going to do? I need a break from all this work. I really want to find stuff about, like, sports around campus. What am I going to do? There's no... I, what's going... Hey, man, looks like you're having some trouble there. Dude, you need to get... You need to find VTTV, man. Channel VTTV? 33. What's that? Dude, it's the place where you can find all your entertainment, sports, news, and, spe and special productions, man. Oh, sweet. Thanks, That's, that's where you got to go, man. Yeah. Welcome back to Weekly What's Up. I'm Susanna Shepard. And I'm Jacob Clore, and this is your Weird Science News. Remember how in Jurassic Park, scientists brought dinosaurs back from the dead? Yep, that's a good movie. It really is. Well, the idea is actually becoming a reality in a process called de-extinction. In 2003, biologists brought back a Pyrenean ibex by b making a clone of frozen tissues harvested from the last of these goats. The clone died within minutes of its, of its birth due to lung deformity, but the experiment proved that de-extinction was possible. Now scientists are talking about bringing back not only endangered species, but completely extinct species, such as passenger pigeons, dodo birds, and even woolly mammoths. The passenger pigeon and dodo birds would only be able to be brought back through the slight chance of DNA fragments being reassembled, but the woolly mammoths are a whole other story. Well-preserved bodies have been dug out of the tundra, giving woolly mammoths a much higher likelihood of being brought back onto this earth. If a living cell could be found, it could be grown into an embryo and implanted into the closest living relative, the elephant, who would then give birth to a mammoth instead of an elephant. It's still a long stretch, but science is closer than ever to creating a real-life Jurassic Park. Wow. They need to stop at the with a whole dinosaur thing. Didn't they ever watch the movie and learn? But I would definitely love to see a dodo bird. That Those hey, birds are just so funny. Woolly mammoth, man. I would yeah. go on a ride. They need to like set up a park where people can like yeah. go on rides, like people that do would... in India with elephants. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the new tourist industry, that's for sure. Biologist Jonathan D. Allen definitely had to turn the other cheek when he was forced to remove a parasite from his cheek using forceps. The parasite Ganglionema pulchruma is usually found in livestock. Allen, a professor at William & Mary in Williamsburg, Virginia, first found the worm while teaching a class. He says, it was in the mucosa, the fleshy part of the cheek. The first three months, it was in the back of the throat in places I could touch with my tongue. I could feel it with my throat, but not my finger. It wasn't until it moved to my lip that I could see it and it was willing to wa talk, talk to someone other than my wife and confess that it was in my body. Alan Sendis referred him to an oral surgeon who diagnosed his ailment as a normal discoloration in his mouth. Unsatisfied with the diagnosis, Alan took matters into his own hands and removed the parasite with the help of his wife. His case was the 13th case reported in the United States. Imagine if you found that in your cheek. I'm scared. Like, how do those things, is it like the same thing as like spiders can crawl into your mouth when you sleep? Like, that, that just, wow. That gives I mean, me the heebie jeebies. Yeah, oh. and it just, Feeling that thing like crawl around inside your mouth like just normally, that's kind of crazy. <sighs> just shake it off. 
There's been a hum heard around the world, and once you hear it, you can't unhear it. The hum is a steady droning sound that's been heard in places as far away as Taos, New Mexico, to Bristol, England, and Largs, Scotland. Instances started being reported in the 1950s from people who stated, at, stated it as an annoyance that never went away. Generally, the hum is heard indoors, and it's louder at night than during the day. People in rural or suburban areas claim to hear it more than urban, more than likely due to the lack of background noises that urban areas provide. Never fear, though, only about 2% of the population in the hum-prone areas can hear it, and most of them are older than 55. There are many different hypotheses that could be the source, ranging from industrial equipment and central heating units to a low-frequency electromagnetic radiation only audible to some people. Some others could be seismic activity or a medical diagnosis, tinnitus, the perception of sound when no external noise is present. There are so many different things that could cause it, there's no way for sure. Or we could all be like the guy from the History Channel and blame aliens. Yep, that's always the one that you go to, but I don't know, I just hate it sometimes when you get like that ringing sensation in your ears and you're just like, go away. But it's if aliens. that just never stopped, that would be aliens. awful. Yeah. <laughs> one University of Wisconsin Madison researcher got more than he bargained for after studying the transmission of diseases from chimpanzees to humans in Uganda. The day he returned, veterinary epidemiologist Tony Goldberg felt a familiar itch in his nose, which he soon discovered to be a tick. Since he was back in his lab, he was able to run a DNA test and discovered the tick belonged to the genus Amblyama. This genus has carried diseases in mammals ranging from cows to humans. Since most ticks need to feed on at least three different hosts during their lifetime, they are known to transmit disease. Luckily, Goldberg has not felt any ill effects from the unpleasant visitor. We're really big into bugs in the body oh, yeah. stories this week. Wow. <laughs> I mean, just weird things going on in people's bodies. Make sure that you check for ticks whenever you go in, like, wooded areas and stuff And like that. weird, wormy things that yeah. are in your mouth. Ugh. Forget Rumpelstiltskin. There are now bacteria that can spin gold out of their surroundings. The gold is toxic to them, so as they take the nutrients they need out of their surroundings, they force gold ions to precipitate out of the solution to create the precious nuggets. The nuggets aren't just precious to us, however. The bacteria then use them to make a home and live the remainder of their lives on them. If scientists could isolate the molecule, we could harvest gold from the oceans and be so rich. Well, we wouldn't be too rich anymore because the gold would be so abundant, but you know what word is very funny? Nuggets. 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 <laughs> That's awesome. Little nugs. Nuggets. <laughs> After getting lost in the woods, one hiker survived Hunger Games style and ate squirrel and other small game. 72-year-old Gene Penaflor went hunting with a buddy when the two got separated. He fell and hurt his knee and soon passed out. He woke up later and decided to conserve energy by eating small game and algae. He built a small fire out of leaves and kept it going day and night until he was rescued. He was lost for 19 days, and he survived on that savanna. That's what's up. Yeah. That's like, my dad's name is Gene, so I'm just like, I'm picturing my dad out in the middle of the forest right yeah. now. Yeah, I mean, eating squirrels, he's just like Katniss. <laughs> barbarian style. Yeah. Opa barbarian style. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Isn't that Opa Ganem's? Anyways, oh, yeah, whatever. anyways, there have been so many things in the media recently involving screaming goats. The Super Bowl Doritos commercials, Mountain Dew commercials, and even a spoof on a Taylor Swift song where someone puts a goat screaming in it. These have inspired scientists to do more research on goats. We've learned, although the goat screams and the things were dubbed over with human ones, goats actually do scream and it sounds a lot like a human's. Sometimes goats even have been known to get into yelling matches with humans. Goats can also develop accents as well. These accents, like humans's, depend on where you're raised. So basically it's saying goats raised in the south will have a southern accent, but goats in England will sound more proper and British. Oh my gosh, a British goat accent? Like imagine it's like, bah, then bah. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> wow. Well, have you ever heard of singing mice, Susanna? No, that sounds pretty cool. Yeah. Well, researchers discovered two species of mice in Central America that do just that. The singing helps the Alston singing mouse and the Cherokee singing mouse mark their territory and stave off clashes. Researchers also found that the Cherokee mice are less tolerant of heat, while the Alston singing mouse are more flexible with the temperature. 
They will spread to cooler areas if no Chiriki mice push them out. To make the performance complete, the Alston singing mouse even appears to be taking a bow after it sings. That's pretty interesting. It just reminds me of a Disney movie. Yeah, exactly, like Cinderella when the mice are singing while they clean. It's so cute. Yeah. Well, that's all for our weird science news, but stay tuned because when we come back, we'll have Corey and Key with Girls vs. Food. Oh, what am I going to do? I need a break from all this work. I really want to find stuff about, like, sports around campus. What am I going to do? There's no... I, what's going... Hey, man, it looks like you're having some trouble there. Dude, you need to get... You need to find BTTV, man. Channel BTTV? 33. What's that? Dude, it's the place where you can find all your entertainment, sports, news, and, spe and special productions, man. Oh, sweet. Thanks, That's, that's where you got to go, man. Yeah. Oh, what am I going to do? I need a break from all this work. I really want to find stuff about, like, sports around campus. What am I going to do? There's no... I, what's going... Hey, man, it looks like you're having some trouble there. Dude, you need to get... You need to find BTTV, man. Channel BTTV? 33. What's that? Dude, it's the place where you can find all your entertainment, sports, news, and, spe and special productions, man. Oh, sweet. Thanks, that's, that's where you got to go, man. Yeah. Welcome back to Weekly What's Up. I'm Key. And I'm Corey. And this is Girls vs. Food. Today we're in the studio discussing something we all love about this time of year. Candy. But not just any candy. We are talking about Japanese candy. In particular, Kit Kats. While Americans are stuck breaking off a piece of that boring old cream-filled wafer covered in chocolate, uh, the Japanese are noshing on every flavor of Kit Kats imaginable. Seriously, they are thinking of every flavor they can imagine. First, we have Wasabi Kit Kats. Yes, that's correct. The spicy green goo you get with your sushi comes in Kit Kat form in Japan. This is the epitome of the spicy sweet combination we hear about so often. Next, we have soy sauce Kit Kats. Yet again, we have something you use with your sushi inside a Kit Kat. Not only does this candy have a high sugar content, but its sodium level is off the charts. Ugh, that's disgusting. It's, it's gross. Like, why would you put that in who, Kit Kats? Who, I don't know. What's I don't know. wrong with these people? <laughs> Here we have something that I've never considered a flavoring ingredient. Sports drinks. In Japan, they use Gatorade to flavor their Kit Kats. In fact, the name of the sports drink brand in Japan is Sweat. Nothing like a sweat-flavored candy bar this Halloween. Now, something for you connoisseurs, wine connoisseurs out there, or just the average college kid. Wine-flavored Kit Kats. Why bother buying an expensive bottle of wine and a nice box of chocolate for your significant other this holiday season? Kit Kats brings you the best of both worlds. That's actually quite Sounds pretty convenient, good. Yeah. depending on the flavor of the wine. <laughs> Next we have uh, what from the surface could be an okay flavored chocolate bar. The wrapper of this next Kit Kat is just an apple, but look closer and it's not an apple flavored Kit Kat, it's apple vinegar flavored. Apples are in season, so maybe this could be the perfect treat for this time of the year. Maybe not. When you first said apple, I was saying okay. Yeah, yeah. But uh, no. no, no, not anymore. Apple vinegar, <laughs> I don't like, why? Why is it necessary? Oh, it's gross. Finally, we have a simple yet very strange Kit Kat flavor. It's something that, uh, that has tons of uses here in America, and you'll probably find it in every convenience store, but the Japanese seem to have taken it a step further. How does a corn-flavored Kit Kat sound? It's not on the top of the foods I need to eat list, and it's definitely you know, not on anyone else's either. That's also gross. 
<laughs> These are all fun disgusting. Maybe if it was like popcorn is. flavored, I would. I would Even that, it's kind of weird. Like, corn, like popcorn, corn, corn on the cob flavored candy. Mm-hmm. We'll see. We'll see. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's all we have time for on this week's segment of Girls vs. Food. But stay tuned because when we come back, we have Rihanna and Macy with Weird World Facts. <laughs> Oh, what am I going to do? I need a break from all this work. I really want to find stuff about, like, sports around campus. What am I going to do? There's no... I, what's going on? Hey, man, looks like you're having some trouble there. Dude, you need to get... You need to find BTTV, man. Channel BTTV? 33. What's that? Dude, it's the place where you can find all your entertainment, sports, news, and, spe- and special productions, man. Oh, sweet. Thanks, That's, that's where you got to go, man. Yeah. Oh, what am I going to do? I need a break from all this work. I really want to find stuff about, like, sports around campus. What am I going to do? There's no... I, what's going Hey, man, it looks like you're having some trouble there. Dude, you need to get... You need to find BTTV, man. Channel BTTV? 33. What's that? Dude, it's the place where you can find all your entertainment, sports, news, and, spe- and special productions, man. Oh, sweet. Thanks, that's, that's where you got to go, man. Yeah. Welcome back to Weekly What's Up. I'm Macy Kinder. And I'm Raina Miller. And And these these are are your your Weird World Facts. The proper name for marshmallows in Lucky Charms cereal is actually Marbits. I kind of wonder how they made that up. What what does that even mean? What is a Marbit? Why don't they just call it Mini Marshmallows? Mini Marshmallows. (laughs) To have your photo taken with the first camera ever, you would have to sit still for more than eight hours. I give up. Talk about taking a selfie. That would be the world's longest selfie. Selfie Sunday. You would probably start at like one o'clock in the morning. Crying releases extra stress hormones, which is why you feel better after doing so. What do you think, Rihanna? Do you feel better after you have a good cry? Because I do. Honestly, yes. I could cry right now. <laughs> have you had a stressful day? Today has been terrible. Let's just put that to a minimum. Rapper Eminem said he used to spend hours studying the dictionary to expand his vocabulary for rhymes. I could see that. Because you could only rhyme B, me, C, <laughs> only times for uh, everyone to get annoyed. The word muggles was used as a slang term for marijuana amongst jazz musicians of the 1920s and 1930s. Okay, is, uh, what? Maybe that's why J.K. Rowling wrote the Harry Potter series. Muggles, they're actually, you know, because they're doing something else in their spare time. That's why they didn't need to be wizards. They're already preoccupied. In ancient Rome, the only women who wore togas were actually prostitutes because they were required to do so. Now I feel guilty wearing a toga to senior toga day in high school. Exactly. Cows have best friends and can be stressed when they are separated. That is so cute. That's honestly adorable. That is so adorable. But I don't know if I've ever seen a pair of cows. Like together? They're always kind of by themselves. There are more plastic flamingos in the United States than real ones. Wow. I I don't know. I don't know. I have a neighbor that literally has probably 30 flamingos in her front yard. In her front yard. Probably. That's not even, they're blue, they're green. She's got some Christmas flamingos she'll be putting up soon. Oh my goodness. Did you know that Monday is the day of the week when the risk of heart attack is the greatest? I can actually see that because everyone dreads Monday, and believable. that's why. Mm-hmm. Because everyone's stressed sure. out, they've had a long weekend, nobody did anything. Exactly. In a 2013 survey, 
Karen voted Miley Cyrus and Chris Brown for the worst celeb role models for kids. You know, I have to say, though, that Miley Cyrus technically never asked to be your role model. Exactly. I mean, you have to think about it. Like, you may not like them, but they never took the job. Or, like, I know for you know. sure Chris Brown didn't ask to be a role model. Bory Bory Gimme is a noise that your stomach makes when you are hungry. Why, are Why did they name it? Growl? I thought it was a gurgle. gurgle. I thought my stomach gurgled. Oh, that's Borgie, worse. Borgie, Borgie. Borgie, Borgie. <laughs> well, thank you once again for joining us for your Weird World Facts. As always, I'm Rhiannon. And I'm Macy. Tune in next week for some more weird news. <laughs>